Hi, this is Mark Pilkington from Skywagons University. Today we're going to be doing a uh, model year changes and some of the details on a Cessna Turbo 210. Um, we're trying out this new mic because the other one was here and it was kind of fading in and out. We're working with sound a little bit, so I'm going to try not to look too much like Britney Spears with it on. Um, 210s, quick recap. So 210s started being made in 1960. So the first two years, 60, 61, were tapered fuse large. They were kind of 182 retractables. They were four seats. They had IO 470 on them. Then 63 was basically a 205, but retractable. And it had the 182 wings and tail and an IO 470 in it. And then, remember, 64, 65, and 66, they're basically 206s, 520s, but retractable. So they have the longer ailerons, the wider tail. And then... 67 was a weird kind of first experimentation with the cantilever wing, no strut, but they have very steep dihedral, very steep, like almost, you know, ridiculous. And then 68, they still have these, they still had three side windows, and then you get into the Centurion. This is the strutless Cessna Turbo 210 that everybody seems to know as the classic Centurion. They have longer gear legs. They're not leaf spring steel. They're tubular, so they're slightly longer and they're more splayed out, which means when they retract, they're further back, which gives you more room for the fifth and sixth seats. Um, from the late 60s, early 70s, up until 1978, they had gear doors like this. I'll talk about that in a minute. The gear doors can be removed on these by a, a modification called the Uvalde Gear Door Mod. So you'll see sometimes an earlier than 78 210 without gear doors and it probably means it's had a gear up because it's quicker to fix it without them than to put gear doors back on it or you can just remove them if you think they're troublesome and put on this mod so it's up till 78 has gear doors 79 has no gear doors 77 and newer are 310 horsepower if they're turbocharged they're 300 horsepower if they're not turbocharged and if they're turbocharged but they are older than 77, they're 285 horsepower. Those have a 1400 hour TBO. The 77 and newer planes, like this one, this is a 77, they have a 310 horsepower engine in it with a 1600 hour TBO. And they also come from the factory with the larger square tipped wide cord three blade propeller on it. The main thing though, of the Centurion 210 that we all kind of know as the later model planes is there's the door window and one long window. And they have no strut and they have a straight tapered wing. So the wing goes from the root to the tip in a constant taper. It doesn't go parallel and then narrow like on the early planes that had the struts. They've also got much bigger flaps and they've also got much bigger ailerons. I mean, look at the size of that. It's hinged in the middle. It's a Fry's aileron. It's very effective. And you can put a stole kit on these. There's not really a point in doing it because this plane is not really a stole plane. But if you want it to land a little bit more like a 206, you could put a cuff on it. The straight cord wing means it's built for speed. It's turbocharged. It's retractable. It has no lower drag. It's got no strut. It's got a laminar flow wing. So it's meant to go fast. So it's probably best that you keep it as one that goes fast. Um, gear doors. When you open the gear doors, <clears throat> on another video, you can see on my 182RG retraction, you can see when the wheels are up. And you can see the wheel. It's lying in a channel. It's in full view. These gear doors open, let the wheel in, and close behind it. And then when you put it down, they obviously open, let the wheel out, and close behind it. So there's a big mechanism in there. You've got to maintain and look after that. That's good to have it rigged correctly. If it's got the Uvalde gear door mod on it, this whole piece, this skin, the door, and this skin are gone, and it's just flash, and there's just a little hole here where the wheel goes in. And remember, that is on the 70, uh, no gear doors is on 79 and newer. Baggage door. It's angled a little bit just because of the structure of the plane. They have a spring in them. They're very easy to slam by accident. The wheel well is here. Come around and have a look at that bump. So you've got baggage behind the wheel well, but that whole chunk there is where the wheels are come up inside, but it gives you room for a real fifth and sixth seat. We'll go inside the plane in a minute. The other thing that they've all got in these later models is the wide 13-foot flat-skinned horizontal stabilizer. There's no ribs. There's none of these Cessna grooves like the um, 182s, 185s, 180s have on the skins 
on any of the control surfaces. I'll just tip that up a bit so you can get a better view of it. Always flat skins. Always 13 feet wide. This plane actually has vortex generators on it. You can see them there on the um, vertical fin. They're also underneath here on the underside of the horizontal and on the leading edges of the wings. If you come in the front and look at the seats, I'll show you how the rear seat configuration works through the baggage door. So everybody gets in the front two doors, but in the back, because of the longer gear legs, the wheel well bump is further back. And because it's further back, it gives room for a real seat. So this is a bench fifth and sixth seat, holds two people, it's individual seat belts, proper seats, and this is the bump where the wheel well is. And then with that down, of course, there's this entire baggage area for hauling stuff around. And some people will fly these as a four-seater with the middle two out. Because if you take out the middle two, now you've got a limo. You've got giant back bench. The plane likes a little bit of an aft center of gravity anyway. Two front seats and six feet of leg room and a 1,400-pound useful load and a turbocharger. You can't really ask for any more. But see how easy that is to stow? Pull her up. Latch it in. Done. Real six seats. Something very significant on any of the strutless Cessna 210s and the Cardinals is there's a new AD come out on their spar. Inside here, there is a piece of cast aluminum about the size of a piece of railway track. It's huge. The wings bolt to it. It's this bulge. I mean, the oxygen bottles are either side of it, but it's huge. It's about this wide, this long, and it, the wings bolt to it. Um, a, a 210 in Australia had a wing come off in a high G maneuver in a salty environment in a humid place. But anyway, the uh, wing failed. And now, to do the AD, you've got to take out the headliner, remove all the paint, and then you've got to test it for pits and corrosion to a certain depth. It's all written in the AD. If it passes, you're good. Corrosion proof it and put it all back together. If it fails, you have to replace the spar, which means removing both wings and removing the cabin roof and taking the spar out and replacing it with another one that costs twenty to thirty thousand dollars and then putting it all back together and painting everything and putting in the new headliner so it can be a significant event so whenever you buy one of these make sure if it's a 210 with no struts or a cardinal that it has the spar ad done this one was just done so a quick view of the engine i've already loosened the cowling so we'll just pop that off they're very easy to get off they're all zeus fast and a half turns so a continental TSIO 520M, 310 horsepower, 1600 hour TBO. A couple of things to note about it. If you look down here, see this blanked off end of the exhaust pipe? Right there, it just comes out but it ends. That normally would go around the back of the engine. So that's been blanked off. So there's three cylinders going into the turbo, and then on the other side there's three cylinders going into the turbo. It used to be with that pipe going around the back to feed the turbo, exhaust um, but it's very hot and it's underneath everything in here so this is a very good mod it's called the nicely exhaust it gets rid of a very hot bit of exhaust that goes underneath all your fuel servos around the back so that's a good upgrade to have gammy injectors another thing gammies will calibrate and meter your fuel more precisely and allow the plane to be run more economically with with perfect egt's and tit's so that's just an overview of the engine and then we're going to go around the other side and look at the intercooler Okay, other side. Oops. I'll clean that off. So, this is the intake. Obviously, this is the baffling engine there. This is all turbocharging and intercooling. Down there is the turbo. It's very big. It's like in a 206. That's the actual turbo impeller itself. There's the exhaust. And down here is the actual turbine. So, the exhaust drives this portion. This portion spins and creates induction. This is the intercooler. I'm not going to talk in detail about it in this video. We're going to do a quick other video about that because it's a whole separate subject. But that is a very nice upgrade to have on a plane. And you can see its air intake is here. That's the intercooler. 310 horsepower, TSIO 520. Okay, so thanks very much for watching. This is Mark Pilkington from Skywagons University. Um, if you like these videos, just subscribe on the button below and click on the little bell. It gives you notifications of other videos when they're posted. But thanks very much for watching. Please comment below. And if you see any errors or anything that you think that you could contribute to, just please let me know.